Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 21st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, Rob wrote up a real neat script in PowerShell that I'm sure instant responders will love. It collects information about who is currently using a particular workstation. And well, with Rob script, you can actually collect this information throughout your network. Not only that, it will also consult Active Directory to add phone numbers and email address of the particular user. So in the end, you end up with a little table that lists a username, the user's Active Directory information like phone number and email address, as well as the IP address of the workstation the user is currently logged in. So great thing to then use this table to contact users of affected workstations that you, for example, need them to just step away from or power down or disconnect from the network or whatever your plan proposes. Rob also made the script available on GitHub, so you're not left to just uh, copy pasting it from his blog post. And I'm sure as he has updates or so, he'll also push them out on GitHub. And Adobe today released uh, patches for Adobe After Effects and Media Encoder. Some have sort of called these emergency patches. Not really sure if I agree with that characterization. Yes, uh, the patches do fix uh, remote code execution vulnerability, but it's not currently being exploited. And Adobe actually assigned them a priority of three, which sort of indicates that Adobe doesn't believe that uh, these vulnerabilities will be exploited anytime soon. Also, neither After Effects nor Media Encoder, I believe, is very heavily used. It's really more something that sort of content creators install and use on their systems. And only the Windows versions of these products are affected. And Cisco fixed yet another static system administrator password. This time it's in the smart software manager. The CVE assigned to this vulnerability is 2020. 3158. This particular fixed password does allow access to a system account. So certainly something that you do want to address. And you should expect that this particular credential will probably be posted somewhere easy to spot soon. In addition to this critical vulnerability, Cisco patched a number of vulnerabilities that Cisco rates as high. That typically means they do allow a denial of service or or approach escalation attack. And this affects the email security appliance, the data center network manager, iOS XR and UCS based products. And yesterday at a meeting of the Certificate Authority Browser Forum, which is essentially the industry group that determines how browsers deal with certificates, Apple announced that it will shorten the maximum lifetime it accepts for certificates. Now, currently the maximum lifetime acceptable is 825 days. This will be reduced to 398 days or 13 months starting for certificates that are issued after September 1st. So any certificate issued before September 1st will still be valid for the full 825 days. Anything issued after that, if it's valid for more than 398 days, well, the certificate will just not be accepted at all. So it will not be even considered valid for the first 398 days. Uh, this, of course, a little bit uh, slap in the face for any certificate authority out there that still wants to sell certificates one of the selling points, so to speak, uh, was that these certificates are valid for at least sort of two years and you don't need to rotate them as often as, for example, you have to with Let's Encrypt. Of course, this new policy also doesn't affect you at all if you are already using Let's Encrypt because these certificates are already rotated much more frequently. So in essence, in particular, if you're using an internal certificate authority, come up with some scripts to automate this process and roll out new certificates regularly, let's say every three months or so, just like what Let's Encrypt does. 
And the team at R2C came out with a pretty neat tool that you may want to be playing with over the weekend. It's REDOS. It's a tool to find uh, regular expression bugs in Python. Now, what it really focuses on, as the name implies, REDOS is denial of service vulnerabilities with regular expressions. Regular expressions can be computationally quite expensive, and there are certain patterns in regular expressions that will lead to denial of service conditions. They're not always that easy to spot, but this regex debugger that they came up with will make it easier for you to find these problematic regular expressions. Well, and that's it for today. And then as a reminder, next week, at least Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be spending in San Francisco at uh, the RSA conference. If you happen to be there, uh, I'll uh, be part of two events. Uh, first of all, uh, two hour hands on a lab session that Jason Lamb and I'll be doing about mobile web application authentication. So uh, take a look at this. There is a prior registration encouraged as limited seating. Uh, so uh, please reserve your seat if you plan to attend. Uh, but of course, if there are seats available, uh, we'll still take walk-ins. And on Thursday afternoon, I'll be part of course of the keynote panel with Alan and Heather and Ed. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.